Hello students, welcome back to another class of history today. We will be looking at chapter 7 from your history textbook, Science and Technology. Let's begin with our class. In this chapter, we shall study India's achievements in the areas of science and technology. Also, we are going to learn about the important institutions in the areas of science and technology and their contributions. So, we are going to be looking at the important institutions like Indian Atomic Energy Commission, the Dhruva Nuclear Reactor, the Nuclear Power Corporation of India Limited. We are also going to look at the various institutions and their contributions. So the nuclear tests that were conducted that was the first nuclear test and the second nuclear test and where India has reached in missile development. So let's start with our lesson. So let us look at one of the important institutions in the areas of science and technology that is the Indian Atomic Energy Commission. India's first Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru wanted to nurture a scientific temper and bring about the nation's progress. From this perspective, he set up the Indian Atomic Energy Commission on 10th of August 1948. Dr. Homi Bhabha was appointed as the first chairman of the commission. The objectives of the commission were to produce electricity from atomic energy, increase the yield of food grains and make them last longer, set up the technology for achieving this that is how to increase the yield of food grains and make them last longer and also to develop nanotechnology. Let us try to understand what is nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is the manipulation and manufacture of materials and devices on the scale of atoms or small groups of atoms. The nanoscale is typically measured in nanometers or billions of a meter. The possibilities for the future are numerous. Nanotechnology may make it possible to manufacture lighter, stronger and programmable materials that require less energy to produce than conventional materials that produce less waste than with conventional manufacturing and that promise greater fuel efficiency in land transportation, ships, aircraft and space vehicles. Nano coatings for both opaque and translucent surfaces may render them resistant to corrosion, scratches and radiation. Nanoscale electronic, magnetic and mechanical devices and systems with Greater levels of information processing may be fabricated as may chemical, photochemical and biological sensors for protection, health care, manufacturing and the environment. New photoelectric materials that will enable the ma manufacture of cost efficient solar energy panels and molecular semiconductor hybrid devices that may become engines for the next revolution in information age. The potential for improvements in health, safety, quality of life and conservation of the environment are vast. Let us now look at the progress and development that happened in India all thanks to the work done by the Indian Atomic Energy Commission. In 1956, the Department of Atomic Energy set up Apsara, a nuclear reactor functioning on atomic energy. In 1969, an atomic power station was set up at Tharapur. A reactor research center was set up at Kalpakam in Tamil Nadu to successfully use thorium for generating atomic power. 
the role of the reactors is important in developing atomic power factories manufacturing heavy water needed for the generation of atomic power were set up at vadodara talcher tutikorin kota etc an institution called the heavy water projects was set up to carry out research on manufacturing heavy water within the country it was later named as the heavy water board let us understand what is heavy water heavy water is a form of water with a unique atomic structure and properties coveted for the production of nuclear power and weapons like ordinary water h2o each molecule of heavy water contains two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom the difference though lies in the hydrogen atoms in ordinary water each hydrogen atom has just a single proton in its nucleus in heavy water each hydrogen atom is indeed heavier with a neutron as well as a proton in its nucleus this isotope of hydrogen is called deuterium and heavy water's more scientific name is deuterium oxide abbreviated as d2o now how is it used in the nuclear power plants nuclear power plants harness the energy of countless atoms of uranium splitting apart or fissioning in a chain reaction heavy water can help keep such a chain reaction going on as each uranium atom breaks apart it shoots out neutrons that can go on to split other atoms but the neutrons are much more likely to trigger new fissions events if they are slowed down like traffic cops heavy water's deuterium atoms effectively curb the pace of neutrons without capturing them nuclear reactors that use heavy water can employ a form of uranium commonly found in nature rather than requiring so called enriched uranium which contain a higher percentage of easily split uranium atoms but is expes- expensive to produce let us move on to the next important institution that is the dhruva nuclear reactor in 1985 a completely indian made nuclear reactor called the dhruva was started at trombe near mumbai the dhruva nuclear reactor uses uranium as fuel at this center around 350 radioactive substances are produced they are used in industry agriculture and medicine another important institution is the nuclear power corporation of india limited the npcil this company was set up in 1987 to generate electricity from atomic energy The objective of the company is to master and develop the technology to generate safe, cheap and environmentally profitable power and make the country self-sufficient. Let us now move ahead and study about the various nuclear tests that India had conducted. The first nuclear test at pokhran india successfully performed her first nuclear test at pokhran in rajasthan on 18th may 1974 in consonance or in agreement with the policy of using nuclear energy for peaceful purposes and for self sufficiency the reason why india took this decision was China's nuclear capability and Pakistan's desperate efforts to acquire nuclear weapons with China's help. Dr. Homi Sethna, the chairman of the Indian Atomic Energy Commission and 
Dr. Raja Ramanna, director of the Bhabha Atomic Research Center, played a major role in conducting this nuclear test. Prime Minister Indira Gandhi took the decision of carrying out a nuclear explosion. Pokharan was chosen on the basis of the required criteria for the location of the nuclear test that is it should be far away from human settlement and it should not have any ground water reserves. Do you know? In 1974, when India carried out her first nuclear test at Pokharan, the USA refused to give India the technology for defense related fields such as space research, communications and missile development. As a result, India adopted a policy of developing its own missile development program without depending on the US. Thus, India joined the rank of nations like the USA, the USSR, France, China and Germany who had their own missile programs. In the picture alongside, you can see the stockpile of, of nuclear weapons that are existing in the countries of the world. Let us now look at the second nuclear test that was conducted by India. On 11th of May 1998, India carried out its second nuclear test to prove its nuclear preparedness. Three tests were done on this day. One of them was of the hydrogen bomb. Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee assured that there would be no first use of nuclear weapons by India. But the USA imposed economic sanctions on India immediately. Do you know? In 1958, the Defense Research and Development Organization, the DRDO, was established under the Department of Defense of the Government of India. The objective of this organization was to make India self-sufficient with respect to means, equipment and weapons required for defense. After 1983, the organization developed several missiles under the leadership of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Dr. Kalam has made a great contribution in the production of missiles. Dr. Kalam is known as the father of India's missile program. He is also referred to as the Missile Man of India. Let us now move ahead and look at India's missile development program. Prithvi In 1988, India successfully tested the missile Prithvi and in 1989, the missile Agni. The entire world took note of India's program of developing nuclear missiles indigenously, that is, using the knowledge and technology of Indians alone. The Integrated Guided Missile Development Program, the IGMDP, was conceived by and carried out under the leadership of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Defense Research and Development Organization, that is the DRDO, undertook the task of building the missiles. Prithvi 1, a surface to surface ballistic missile, was given to the Army. Prithvi 2 was given to the Air Force, while Prithvi 3 was given to the Navy. Prithvi had the capacity to carry nuclear weapons of 500 to 1000 kgs. Prithvi could travel a distance of 150 to 300 kilometers due to the nuclear ballistic missiles. In 
in order that china and pakistan get an idea of india's missile strength and india's borders remain secure agni 1 was tested this military missile had a range of 700 kilometers later agni 2 and agni 3 were also produced the akash and nag missiles in 1990 the missile akash was developed to fire from land into air this missile had a capacity to carry 720 kg explosives at supersonic speed and a range of 30 km the missile nag was made in order to destroy the tanks of the enemy it is of the fire and forget type india has militarily become secure due to the production of missiles in today's module we stop over here and let us look at a few evaluation questions explain the following with reasons the first pandit nehru established the atomic energy commission for this answer children you have to go back to the slide on the indian atomic energy commission and you have to see as to what were the reasons that india wanted to establish this pandit jawaharlal nehru especially uh that how he wanted to bring about the nation's progress and uh and uh, and what did he have in his mind when he was establishing this so that you can cover up and you can write in this answer the next is india decided to conduct nuclear tests for this you have to go back to the slide on the first nuclear test that was hap that uh, uh, happened at pokhran and we see that how india was pressurized by its neighbors and to show that even india had the power to give back or to attack back india had to conduct these nuclear tests for the third question uh, usa imposed economic sanctions on india you can uh, go back and look at the do you know that we have done children for in the, there in there we see that india uh, when uh, india had carried out the nuclear test usa had refused to give india a lot of uh, uh, you know aid or help technological help that india was giving and uh, because usa had become envious about india if india would also start uh, 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 making nuclear weapons then there was a possibility that india would no longer need the help of usa so hence uh, we find that um, uh, usa imposed economic sanctions and did not give india a lot of things just because india had conducted a nuclear test the next question is write the answer in 25 to 30 words and you have to write about the pokhran nuclear test now as we know there were two pokhran tests that happened the first nuclear test and the second nuclear test so you can write about uh, the day when when it happened and what was the reason it happened and uh, what are the things or who were the people who were responsible for these nuclear tests uh, in this answer moving on to the next question write in brief about uh, why dr apj abdul kalam was called as the missile man of india for this children again you have to go to that do you know para, uh, do you know uh, uh, slide that we have done in which we have pointed out the work done by dr apj abdul kalam and hence that because of his uh, contribution to the to this fi field uh, he is called as and also that he is known as the he is known as the father of india's missile program which is why he was referred to as the missile man so from there you can copy this answer as well i hope you understood this lesson uh, children we will be back with another uh, part of the same lesson see you soon and happy learning